okay, okay, you win. I had no intention of making this video, but a few weeks ago, I showed you the Super X lookup function. It performs multiple one-way lookups and spills the results vertically and horizontally. Conceptually and mathematically, it was beautiful, but you weren't happy with that. No, 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 you want something that's practical as well. The thing is, what you want is the double X lookup function, a function that performs multiple two-way lookups and spills the results horizontally and vertically. And that's what we're going to create in this video. So if you're ready, let's get started. On the left, we have the values that we want to look up from. We have an item column, and then across the top, we have categories of north, south, east, and west. And then in the body, we have the values for that intersection of item and region. What we want to do is to look up the item, but also the region, and then return those relevant values. And we want to do this inside a single formula. For this, we are going to use the index X match, X match combination. So let's start with our first X match. In cell I4, our type equals X match. For the lookup value, we want the range from H4 to H7. Then for the lookup array, we want the range from B4 to B11. We are going to use the match mode and search mode. Initially, these are just placeholders. So we're going to use zero for the match mode for an exact match. And for the search mode, we're going to enter one, which is to search first to last. So those two arguments are their default values. When we close the bracket and calculate, it tells us that Charlie is in the third row, Echo is in the fifth row, Golf is in the seventh row, and Alpha is in the first row. Now, all we have to do is to wrap this in the index function. At the start of the formula, I will add index, opening bracket. For the array argument, we're going to select the cells from C4 to C11. For the row num argument, that's going to be the result of the X match. So we can come to the end, close that bracket and calculate. And it now returns each of those values. But what if we want to look up north and east at the same time in a single formula? Well, let's go and add our second X match. For the col num argument of index, we're going to use X match, opening bracket. The lookup value will be the values in I3 to J3. The lookup array will be the range from C3 to F3. Again, for the match mode, we're going to use zero for an exact match. And for the search mode, we're going to use one for search first to last. We can then close the X match and close the index. Currently, our index is only looking at C4 to C11. We need to expand that so that it includes C4 to F11. Now, when we calculate, it gives us all of the items, but also all of the regions, all from a single formula. We've now got our basic formula. It performs multiple two-way lookups and returns the results vertically and horizontally. But we want to change this into a custom function that we can use on any workbook with ease. So now let's go and pull out the Lambda function and turn this into our own custom function called double X lookup. Let's edit our formula. At the start, I will add the Lambda function. Lambda is the function that creates custom functions. And for our custom function, we want to include all of the parameters that we need to complete our calculation. The first parameter we need is V lookup value. This is the lookup value for the vertical axis. Then we want the V lookup array. This is the array that we want to look up from. Now, because this is a two way lookup, we also need the H lookup value and the H lookup array. And that is for the horizontal values. Then we have the return array. These are the values that we want to return based on the lookups. X lookup also has an if not found argument. So we're going to add that as an optional argument. Therefore in square brackets, we want if not found. We then need the optional arguments for the match mode and the search mode for both the vertical and horizontal lookups. So as another optional argument, we want the V match mode. Then we want the V search mode. So they are for our vertical axis. We also have our H match mode and our H search mode. They are for the horizontal axis. That means that our double X lookup will be able to perform all of those advanced lookups 
just like XLOOKUP. So we can do wildcard searches and search last to first, just like we can with normal XLOOKUP. Now let's go and use all of these parameters inside our calculation. The range C4 to F11 will become the return array. The range H4 to H7 will become the VLOOKUP value and B4 to B11 will become the VLOOKUP array. The zero we will replace with our V match mode and the one we will replace with our V search mode. Then we come to the second X match, I3 to J3 will become our H lookup value. C3 to F3 will be our H lookup array. The zero will be our H match mode and the one will be the H search mode. Now we haven't used the if not found argument we're going to apply this by using if error. So at the start, we will add if error, opening bracket. That means that if our index function returns an error, then at the end, the value that we want to return is going to be based on the if function. So if, opening bracket, then we're going to use the is omitted function. This checks whether an argument has or has not been provided. So if the if not found argument is omitted, in that scenario, we want to return the default error, which is the hash NA error. To achieve that, we can use the NA function. However, if the if not found has been used, we want to return the value which the user has provided in the if not found argument. We can then close the if, close the if error, and close the lambda function. We want to test this function to make sure it works before we place it inside the name manager. So I'm going to open a bracket, and then the test values that we want to use for our VLOOKUP value, we're going to use H4 to H7. For the VLOOKUP array, we're going to use B4 to B11. For the HLOOKUP value, we're going to use I3 to J3. Then for the HLOOKUP array, we're going to select C3 to F3. And finally, for the return array, we're going to select C4 to F11. I can close the bracket at the end and calculate that now gives us exactly the same results. So we've been able to test our Lambda function. Now let's go and add this into the name manager. I will copy all of the code in our Lambda function, but I don't want the test values at the end. So everything before the test values, I will select and copy. Then from the formulas ribbon, we can go to define name. The name of our function is going to be double X lookup. The scope will be for the workbook, so no change there. We could add a comment if we want to. We're not going to at the moment. And then we come to the refers to box. In there, we want to paste the formula that we previously copied. Then as soon as we click OK, our double X lookup function has been created. If you like the sound of double X lookup, or if you've learned something new, or maybe you just like watching videos of people in glasses talking about Excel, if any of those are true, why not subscribe and get notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos? Go on, click that button. Once you've done that, you can get back to looking at double X lookup. Now that we've created our double X lookup function, we can go and use it in our workbook. And remember, this function has all of those same options as X lookup, which means we can perform wildcard searches, we can search last to first, we have all of that advanced functionality, but now the results look up horizontally and vertically. Let's delete the formula in I4, and let's type equals double. And in there, in the IntelliSense, we can see double X lookup. That is the function that we have just created. I'll press tab to accept that. For the VLOOKUP value, let's select H4 to H7. For the VLOOKUP array, we will use B4 to B11. For the HLOOKUP value, let's use I3 to J3. And we want to look that up from the HLOOKUP array, which is C3 to F3. And then we come to the return array. And we want to return the results from C4 to F11. They are all the required arguments. So let's close that bracket and calculate. And our double X lookup now returns the results that we expect. Now, what happens if we look up a value that doesn't exist? So I'm going to change echo to indigo. When that calculates, we get the hash NA error, but we can change our double X lookup function so that it returns at zero if there is an error. Let's edit our formula. And for the if not found argument, let's enter zero. When we close that and calculate, 
it now returns zero for any missing values. Now, just because we're performing a vertical and horizontal lookup doesn't mean that we have to return a two-dimensional array. In cell J14, I'm going to type equal double X lookup opening bracket. For the VLOOKUP value, we want the range from H14 to H17. And for the VLOOKUP array, we want B4 to B11. Now for our HLOOKUP value, we can look up I14 to I17. And we want to return that from our HLOOKUP array, which is C3 to F3. Then we come to the return array, and we want to return the values from C4 to F11. When we close that bracket and calculate, we get a one dimensional result, but we've achieved this by looking up into a two dimensional range. Because this has the same functionality as XLOOKUP, it means we can perform a wildcard search, for example. In cell I3, I'm going to change north to asterisk ST asterisk. What this means is that it will match the first item that contains the letters ST anywhere in the text. When we update this, initially it doesn't work. We need to apply the wildcard search setting. Let's edit our formula. We can skip over the V match mode. We can skip over the V search mode. That then comes to the H match mode. And two is the option that gives us a wildcard search. When we close that bracket and calculate, it gives us the same result as East. And that's because if we go first to last, East is the first value in our H lookup array. We've done all the hard work of creating our double X lookup function. Wouldn't it be a disaster if every time we wanted to use it, we had to build this up from scratch? The good news is we don't have to. We can easily copy and paste it between workbooks. All we have to do is to select a cell that contains the double X lookup function. We can copy that cell and paste it into a new workbook. Even if we clear the contents of that cell, double X lookup now exists in that workbook. So if you type equals double, you'll see that double X lookup exists in that workbook. And that's it. That is the very practical double X lookup function that you've all been waiting for. If you enjoyed this video, then I think this next video is really going to be up your street. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.